Okay, so I've rolled out my ink and I'm going to wash the gum off. I've already put a little water under the plate so it should be good and not move on me. So again, I'm using my gum sponge to avoid getting gum in my sponging water that I'm going to use for printing. And I have an empty bowl here that I'm going to put that in. And then I've got my good sponge ready. It's a little bit wet. I'm going to squeeze it out a little. Got some of that extra moisture out of it. And we're ready to print. I'm going to ink this up. It's pretty humid in here today, and so it allows me to ink a little bit longer than I normally would. So I'm going to give this, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 rolls between sponging. I think 12 might be too much. Um, if you look, there's some marks starting to develop right here and right here. Those are fingerprints from handling the plate. I think they were on there before I got the plate. But it's outside my image area. I've put just a tiny bit of um, number five varnish in my ink, about the size of a pea. When you put a little bit of varnish in your ink, you want to have a little less ink on the, on the roller and on the slab <clears throat> so that you don't over ink your drawing. And this looks about the same as it did when I uh, etched it, or when I hit it with the heat gun, which made it look a little lighter. And every time I stop rolling here, if you look, you'll notice there's some scum on the plate. Um, so when I stop rolling, well, well, when you roll back and forth, it deposits a little bit of uh, ink scum where you start and stop the roller. So when you're done rolling, you want to go around the edge to uh, discourage that from developing. Once it's really stuck to the plate, it's pretty hard to get rid of it, so it's better to keep an eye on it. And when it's just starting, your finger can displace it. The abrasiveness of your finger and if it gets bad you need to mix up a little bit of a, a weak etch and apply it to the edges of the plate. So I'm going to give that a proof. The first proof will probably be very light um, and then which is what you want and then it should get progressively darker. So we're back. I've taken three proofs. This is the first proof. Um, it looks pretty much like the plate, uh, except for these areas over here haven't started to pick up ink yet. Whenever you're proofing, um, don't panic if the first one doesn't look good. The only thing wrong with this one is that um, I think it's inked up a little too quickly uh, in here. Um, when it gets this black this quickly on your first proof, you're either over inking it or the ink is maybe too soft, which is I think is the problem. I think the number five varnish I put in the ink, uh, I put a little bit too much in. You know, you can print with straight ink. I was just cheating. If you soften it up with a little varnish, um, it makes printing go quicker uh, because you don't need to ink it up as much. Um, this is the second proof. Uh, when you compare that with the first proof, you can see that the wash areas have darkened. Everything's darkened. This area is starting to pick up ink where those lines were drawn with the rapidiograph ink. And this, which wasn't showing in the first proof, the, soup, the Sharpie uh, pen, is now starting to pick up ink. 
okay? And if you compare that to the third proof, the washes are all darker. They're not really filling in yet. Um, this one might be a bit. Uh, I'm not concerned about this because that was um, just a, I was surprised it worked at all. Um, I'm more interested in the alcohol washes. So um, what I just did, and I'm going to continue printing, is I just uh, switched out my ink, I scraped the palette, and then I um, took out some straight ink from the can. I'm using uh, <clears throat> the uh, shop mix black and replaced the ink on my palette with shop mix, rolled that out. I didn't wash off the roller, I just scraped the palette, rolled it out, scraped it again, and then put on some fresh ink. So there is some of the older ink in it. And I also put some fountain solution in my sponging water, which should help quite a bit. And if I need to, I can go back and give this an etch. So the thing to remember is with lithography, it takes some experience to understand um, what you need to do. The most cru crucial time is at the beginning of the print when you're proofing. Uh, proofing is, is the most critical stage if you let the image fill in and get too dark during the proofing stage, it's pretty hard to correct it. So take it slow. Your first couple of proofs should be light. Not all the information will be there. Just keep proofing and then when your image stabilizes, everything looks like it's not changing, uh, you can go ahead and print on the good paper and just add a little bit of ink to your palette or extra pass or two when you go to good paper because the good paper will absorb more ink. I just rolled up and printed the same plate again using a little stiffer ink and some fountain solution in the water and it looks much better. Um, this area is a little darker but that's the Prismacolor and um, I expected it to get darker so no surprise but I'm happy with the uh, alcohol wash it seems to be pretty stable so far. So I'm going to go ahead and print a few more and uh, I just want to show you a little bit about my rolling pattern here. I'm inking this up with a roller that's about half the size of the plate and it works fine as long as you know a little trick. You can ink up a any size plate with any size roller if you know what you're doing. And it's all about technique. So, just think about if I roll here, okay, and then I roll here, there's an area about this wide that's going to get twice as much ink. So th there's going to be a, a black stripe down the middle of my print. Okay, so to avoid that, what I want to do is stagger where they overlap. So I'm going to use this as like a, a little guidepost here. I'm going to start to the right of it and just kind of move across it gradually. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. I think I'll, I'll start here and just kind of gradually move across. So I gave it four rolls each, which is about right for today. Not quite as humid today as it was yesterday. Sponge it, and then I'll repeat that same pattern oh, four or five times before I take another impression. This is the last print I've pulled. This is the sixth impression. Three were on newsprint. This is the third on white paper. And it's pretty consistent. I think it's fairly stable. It, it may continue to get a little bit darker for each print. This process is not meant for people who want to make large editions. If you're going to do a large edition, you need to put it into a lacquer base. However, um, I think most students aren't, aren't that interested in big editions, so um, this is a good shortcut, um, kind of a, a compromise. So I just want to point out a few things. The alcohol and toner touche is pretty, pretty stable. Um, the uh, 
uh, pigment liner is, is good. This wash made out of uh, <clears throat> drawing ink uh, filled in and it's gone flat, which is not surprising. This rapidiograph ink uh, has grown and it sort of spread on the plate. So you can see it's got a fuzzy line quality to it. Um, I think when you draw with it on the plate, it has a tendency to kind of creep into the grain of the plate and create this sort of fuzzy line. I doubt there's really anything you can do about that. You just have to anticipate it and work with it. If you don't like it, use something else. Um, this uh, blue uh, marker that I used over here, the Sharpie marker, uh, didn't creep as much, so that line stays a little bit more intact. Uh, it is a little bit wider. You could probably find them in a, a smaller nib if you want. And the uh, Duva um, charcoal um, lithocoal uh, material is pretty stable, and the Prismacolor has coarsened quite a bit. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's not going to be nearly as delicate as it looks on the plate when you draw it. If you ever notice that your plate is starting to get darker after you take a proof or a print, it's a good idea to stop and put some gum arabic on the plate. You don't need any talc. <clears throat> Use your gum sponge and you want to move this small amount of gum around until it starts to get tacky. If you have too much gum in your sponge, just squeeze your sponge out. I just flipped it over and continue massaging for a minute and then you can stop. This is a good thing to do if you need to take a break. Don't do this if your image is getting is too light and it's not taking ink correctly. And this should uh, help stop it from getting darker. And you might need to do this frequently if you're running a large edition. <clears throat>